Now we are going to take a look at the comparison test for improper integrals that will allow us to uh, decide whether an improper integral is convergent or divergent without having to do explicit calculations. So let's look at, the, at this example to start with. We want to know if the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx is convergent. If we were to proceed as we have seen so far, we would have to try to calculate this integral, in other words, write it as the limit as t goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to t of e to the negative x squared dx, and then try to calculate this integral from 1 to t. So to do that, we would have to find an antiderivative of e to the negative x squared and plug in the value from uh, 1 and t using the fundamental theorem of calculus. However, the problem here is that we don't know how to find an antiderivative of e to the negative x squared. In fact, it cannot be written um, simply with standard functions. Um, why this is exactly the case is uh, beyond the point here for this course, but the point is we are not able to find an antiderivative of e to the negative x squared. We will see later on in the course that we could represent such an antiderivative as the sum of a series, uh, but this is something for the later part of the course on uh, power series. So what to do then? Well, one thing we can do is compare the function with another one for which we can do the calculations. So we are looking at an integral from 1 to infinity, so x is greater than 1, and that means that if I multiply by x, x squared is greater or equal to x. And therefore, multiplying by negative 1, negative x is greater or equal to negative x squared. And since the exponential function is increasing, that means it preserves inequalities, and therefore e to the negative x is greater or equal to e to the negative x squared. Now, we know that when we integrate on the same interval, we preserve inequalities between functions, and therefore the integral from 1 to t of e to the negative x squared is bounded above by the integral from 1 to t of e to the negative x, as long as t is greater or equal to 1. But the integral on the right-hand side is something that we can calculate with the fundamental theorem of calculus, because in that case, finding an antiderivative is easy. An antiderivative of e to the negative x is simply negative e to the negative x, and so we evaluate this antiderivative between 1 and t, and we get e to the negative 1 minus e to the negative t. But now this inequality between the integral from 1 and t and e to the negative x, I'm sorry, integral from 1 to t of e to the negative x squared that is less than or equal to e to the negative 1 minus e to the negative t is preserved when we take limits as t goes to infinity. And what we have now on the left-hand side, this limit as t goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to t of e to the negative x squared is nothing but the improper integral we are trying to, well, maybe not calculate, but at least decide for that in integral whether it's convergent or not. On the right-hand side, on the other hand, we have the limit of e to the negative 1 minus e to the negative t as t goes to positive infinity. If t goes to positive infinity, then negative t goes to negative infinity. And we know that the limit of the exponential function at negative infinity is 0. Therefore, our limit on the right-hand side is just e to the negative 1. So we have our improper integral bounded above by e to the negative 1. Now, here e to the negative x squared is a positive function. And therefore, the only way this improper integral um, is divergent is if it goes to infinity. In particular, if it's bounded by a finite number, that means it doesn't go to infinity and therefore is convergent. So that means that our integral here is convergent, and to reach this conclusion, we had to compare with another function for which we can do explicit calculations. So, what if instead we add the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared? We couldn't have done exactly the same calculations because you see that we started from the assumption that x is greater than 1, which gave us a way to compare the two functions 
for x greater than 1. But this is not a problem because now the integral from 0 to infinity of our function is simply the integral from 0 to 1 plus the integral from 1 to infinity. Since we have established that the integral from 1 to infinity is convergent, we add to it a finite number because since e to the negative x squared is continuous, the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the negative x squared is uh, just some finite number that we add to the improper integral from 1 to infinity, so we get something convergent. Now let's uh, generalize this method of comparing functions in order to uh, reach conclusions on convergence or divergence of an improper integral. Let's say now we have two continuous functions on an unbounded interval, let's say from a to infinity, and on that interval the function f is greater or equal to the function g and both functions are positive functions. Then if the integral of the larger function is convergent, then the integral of the smaller function is going to be bounded above by that finite number which is equal to integral from a to infinity of f of x dx and therefore will be convergent as well. So if the larger function has an integral that is convergent, the smaller function has also an integral that is convergent and in fact bounded above by the integral of the larger function. On the other hand, if the integral of the smaller function is divergent, then because the integral of f is going to be larger than the integral of g, well if the integral of g goes to infinity, then so does the integral of f. So if the integral of the smaller function is divergent, the integral of the larger function is divergent as well. So that's some, a result that will be often referred to as a comparison test for improper integrals. And we have a variant for type 2 improper integrals, where we're looking at two continuous functions f and g on uh, an interval a, b, where the only discontinuity is the right endpoint b. And um, again, f is greater or equal to g, and both functions are positive on the interval a, b, except possibly at b. Then we have a similar result. If the larger function has a convergent integral on a, b, then the smaller function also has a convergent integral on the in interval a, b. And similarly, if the integral of the small function is divergent, in other words, goes to infinity, then the integral of the larger function goes to infinity as well, in other words, is divergent. Now here I wrote things for the discontinuity on the uh, left, I'm sorry, right hand point of the interval of integration. We would have a similar result if the discontinuity is at the left hand point. And of course we can split things out if we are looking at uh, what happens for discontinuity uh, that is an interior point of the integral of integration. So let's see how it applies concretely here. Let's say we want to decide for these four integrals whether they are convergent or divergent. Starting with the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 plus absolute value of cosine x divided by x. Now making explicit calculation here would be uh, a pain because um, this absolute value of cosine x when x goes from 1 to infinity cosine x x is going to keep changing signs, so we're going to have to split things um, on infin infinitely many intervals where cosine x is absolute value of cosine x is alternatively positive cosine x and negative cosine x. And then on top of that, integrating cosine x over x is not something trivial. So this would be a little bit of a pain to do explicit calculations. However, by comparison, it's a uh, something easy to answer, whether it's convergent or divergent, because 1 plus absolute value of cosine x over x is really 1 plus something positive, so something greater than 1 over x, and therefore we get something greater or equal to 1 over x. So we have our function that we integrate that is greater or equal to 1 over x, and both functions are of course positive on the interval 1 infinity. And we have established that integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the p is convergent 
when p is strictly greater than 1. In particular, it's divergent um, for p equal 1. So that means that the integral of 1 over x is divergent, and therefore by comparison, the integral of a larger function is also divergent.